Alright, here we go. Hardcore Minecraft is the most challenging version of this amazing block game. The world can be lost to the void if I die even just once. I'm going to be taking it a step farther in this world by not even allowing myself to sleep just once in a cozy yellow bed. I'm on no sleep. No sleep. This first episode is jam packed with goals and ideas given the extra time we have without sleeping in the game. In the first 100 days, I plan on getting fully decked out in max armor and tools, defeating every major mob and event in the game, as well as getting a few starter farms built, but not just in their small starter versions. Day zero of this world basically day one but day zero we're going by the in-game time again like every other world finding every biome you could ever ask for including a mushroom island but not just any mushroom island this thing is over two thousand blocks across easily the largest mushroom island i have ever seen trust me if you guys have seen a larger one in your worlds please let me know because i don't think it's possible of course, I was going to set up base on this mob-free, safe zone island, gathering some food from the kind cow inhabitants, and setting up home in the yellow cave. The next day, the true day one of this world, I quickly discovered how dangerous triants can actually be. Honestly, I questioned myself. I am not sure why I thought that would be a good idea. I literally almost lost it all right off the hop. I am the smart. I am the smart. The rest of the day was spent exploring, even getting a golden apple. Oh, let's go. Also one sheep, which really actually proved to be pointless considering I live where there is no grass for the sheep to eat. Damn, I can be special. I spent the next couple in-game days getting organized and bringing some willing villagers over to the island in the middle of the night. I promise no villagers were likely, most likely, maybe not harmed during these adventures. Dude! Where'd you go? Ugh. On day four, I began setting up and prepping to go mining. Even though strip mining is not actually worthwhile as it used to be, mining is also very peaceful, especially to me. Plus, there's an added bonus of diamonds. On the way down to the depths of the world, I found a dungeon of some creepy crawlies. And boy, did they ever give me the creepy crawlies in return. Upon informing them to take their web weaving elsewhere, I searched the chest. Oh, diamond horse armor. With no luck of finding any shiny apples. Damn those shinies. I quickly realized though why no one strip mines anymore and took my chances in caving, which proved vastly more useful. On day 9, I ventured into the fiery depths of the nether to see what kind of spawn maybe the Minecraft gods had bestowed upon me. Only to have a gas nearly send me to an actual afterlife. For finally winning at a game of catch. Oh yeah. Ah. Oh, that's fire. That's so close. Once I used the nether to get to level 30, I quickly returned back to the overworld, where it was safe, realizing that in order to take on the nether, I may actually want to be better prepared. I spent a few in-game days talking to the local cow population. <laughs> Mining. And tending the garden. I managed to not only get fully covered in shiny hard metal, I even got the best enchants possible from the enchantment table for my pickaxe. Let's go. Let's go.
Even though I had gotten solid enchants with the enchantment table, I knew that if I wanted to get truly decked out and accomplish everything I wanted to in these 100 days, I was going to need librarians. Which meant building a breeder. And of course we couldn't build it just out of any random old blocks. The breeder had to be one of style. So I went about destroying somebody's sandbox, which I am sure they won't mind once they see the actual breeder and how cool it looks. The breeder design is a simple one that I use in any world or server I play in. I'm not even sure whose design it really is anymore. I just kind of build it from memory. With the breeder complete and time needing to pass for the farmers who, you know, talk about business and stuff, I disappeared back underground on the hunt for those glorious diamonds. Which, once I found enough of, I went ahead and crafted myself a full set of diamond armor. We are getting so close to the untouchable stage of this hardcore world. As the population of these squidward looking mock dudes continued to grow, I managed to get some good enchants in a bow before diving back into the nether to go talk to some nether bacon. Dang it, now I want to get some bacon. Anybody got bacon? Well in the nether, I also took the opportunity to go find a nether fortress. Apparently, I truly wanted the series to end quickly. As I precautiously, precautiously, I have no idea what that word actually is. You know, how to pronounce it. In English is not my forte. You don't say. <laughs> Dangled myself over a bridge across a lava lake to get to the fortress. Then wandered aimlessly until I got lucky enough to come across the blaze spawner. I quickly stockpiled their fiery rods before hightailing it out of there to get back to the overworld where it was kind of more safe and sound. By day 23, I realized that in order to take down the beast at the end, by day 25, I need to become a flying beast myself. I used some of the million phantom membranes I had already collected, huge shout out to, you know, never sleeping in this world, to craft some slow falling potion. I also cooked up some tasty beef and gathered some pillaring blocks to get up to the obsidian towers and take out those explosive end crystals. I really hope. I don't take any of those straight to the face. Cause you know, that, that, that might hurt. That might hurt. I spent most of the next two days trying to find the actual stronghold. <laughs> Once I got to the end, I managed to destroy each end crystal without a hitch. And I then even told the dragon to take a breath mint. So I didn't have to hold my breath when I'm smacking him with a sword. Damn, that's some stinky, fiery dragon breath. Amazingly enough, even with my render distance cranked way up, it took me a long time to find an end city. Totally not almost losing the world within five seconds of starting my search. Ooh, that was close! After that though, I did think I should take it a little bit more safe while well, I'm in the end. I had to find an end city that had a boat, which happened to be the end city that was directly across from the first end city I found, but that that's a whole different story. Yes, go. Let's go. With wings acquired and less of a chance for me to fall to my death finally, I located the nearest end gate to take me back home. Now that I finally had all the required and super immensely important armor and tools, I spent day 28 and 29 having very intense and completely non-frustrating at all, not in the slightest, conversations with the amazing Minecraft villagers. <laughs> After an hour of banging my head against my desk trying to get the trades I wanted, I finally got mending and unbreaking to keep my beautiful wings flapping. I am 99% sure I literally just completely fried my brain talking, trying to convince them to give me the trades I needed. As a result, the next day, I literally just went iron mining. I wanted a break. That, that's really it. I didn't even need the iron. Day 31 was actually a very special day for this world, as it was the day of our first flight. I also spent the day gathering supplies to make our first proper farm, a massive mob farm. This did unfortunately include making those dreaded dispensers. With 
the Mott Farm out of the way and an aluminum gunpowder now in my arsenal, I set about to build for the first time in my three years of Minecraft a Zombificator Villager Machine. That is the name we are going with. A Zombie Macator Villager Machine. A zombie Converter Machine. Surprisingly, it actually ended up being a lot easier to build than I thought it would be. The actual part that ended up being way more difficult than I thought it would be would be getting a zombie all the way from the jungle biome across the water to the Mushroom Island. However, I do think the zombie will definitely be leaving a head smashing of a review for the fairy travel. Yes, that joke was cringe, and no, I'm not sorry for it at all. Once the zombie was in place, I began the absolute best part of Minecraft. Converting and trading with villagers to get all those overpowered trades. I continued to do this for several days, breaking lecterns and even discovering a very overpowered trade and kind of a little hack in the game. Because the villagers had been zombified and cured, I could buy a single bookcase for one emerald, break it to get three books, and sell each book for an emerald. Literally ended up being unlimited emeralds. After an in-game week of peacefully dealing with villagers, I wanted nothing to do with them anymore, and decided it was time to put this whole series at risk again. Uh, I'm in danger! Off into the nether I went on the hunt for those lovely wither skeletons and their skulls. I must admit though, the luck I had of them was probably the best I ever had. Hey, come on, it didn't even take me long and I got four of them? Alright, now it's time for a slight, uh, fess up. I apparently did not hit record for day 54 or day 55 or even write anything down. And I don't remember what happened. To understand this though, like I've been making this video for the last two months, you know, around my work schedule. So me going back in time to maybe a month ago at this point, I ain't that smart. And no one ever said I was. If you did say I was that smart, yo, huge shout out, but I'm sorry for writing down on that one. On day 56, I decided it was time to put those previously collected Wither Skulls to actual good use and take on a Wither. Now, I did not want to cheese the Wither using the portal in the end. However, I am also not crazy. I still didn't want to fight it out in the open. So, I compromised by digging a long tunnel in the overworld and shooting the Wither from a distance before dealing the final few smacks of my sword. I quickly returned to the surface, used the emeralds I had gotten to build the biggest beacon you have ever seen. Yo, this has to be a world record, right? That is huge. Feeling pretty proud of myself for actually managing to defeat two of Minecraft's boss mobs, I treated myself with some easy exploring. The Minecraft gods also decided to treat me in return with a golden apple and even a trident. Which greatly worried me what evil might come next to make up for this goodwill. For a couple days, I continued to get all the enchantments from the villagers that I could. Continuing along my goal to get completely decked out in all the armors and tools prior to day 100. Taking breaks between villager trays so I didn't go completely insane talking to them. I began prepping to take on some ocean monuments and defeat the next Minecraft boss on my list, the Guardian. This prep mostly constituted me flying around and dive bombing into the ocean to grab some puffer fish. However, my good luck in the game seemed to continue as I not only saw, but managed to capture one of those jungle leopard kitties, that's the name we're going with again, in a boat. Let me know down below in the comments what we should name it and I'll choose the best name and give it to them in the next video. Armed with enough fish to feed an actual army of cats, I went back to base to finish the ultimate silk touch pickaxe and name it Mama's Touch. Cause we all know a mother's touch is a gentle touch. Before taking on the ocean monuments and the three resident guardians, I wanted to complete my armor and tools with some shiny nether metal. Surprisingly, using the TNT method as well as some plain old fashioned hand mining along the trunk borders, it was actually not too long before we had enough debris to make a full set. A 
I even managed to snag another trident on my way back to base. Like, like, what is this good fortune in this world? Are we gonna live forever? Or did I just curse it by saying that? Stay tuned to find out. I had only ever heard of zombie hordes spawning in before, and actually had never seen them. But I must admit, it is both an amazing experience and a terrifying experience, especially for the villagers who straight up turned green because they were so terrified. Thankfully, just a little bit of expensive juice and some, you know, golden apples, they were good to go again. But that was actually kind of cool. I never want to see it again, but it was cool. I'm always so scared the first time I take on a mob again in a new world. But then I remember just how overpowered and actually overprepared I am. I followed up the first monument raid with taking an additional three other monuments. Coming back to base with a good amount of sponges and gold blocks overall. On day 67, I want to start prepping for an actual iron farm. Which is ironic considering earlier in this video, I said I went mining for iron even though I didn't need any. Jokes on past me, you always need iron in this world and you almost never seem to have enough. I flew around the world exploring and freeing all the sheep I came across from their winter coats. I even managed to snag a glorious shiny apple along my journeys. While flying around, I got distracted by the idea that I still didn't have swift sneak on my armor. This resulted in me flying to the nearest mountain, ignoring Minecraft's number one rule of digging straight down and falling right into an ancient city. I promise you I was completely calm, cool, and collected the entire time I was there and did not immediately run for my life like it depended on it as soon as I got the enchantment. I would be back. I'll be back. Immediately the next day, I proceeded to get distracted yet again from the iron farm. Wow, it's a good thing I'm not trying to actually make a video or anything. And thought it would be a great idea to go find a Woodwood Mansion. You know that thing that's over a few thousand blocks away from, you know, your base at all times? Unless you're lucky? Evidently, this is where my luck of the world began to run out. I had to fly thousands of blocks away until I finally found a mansion. And like any normal visitor to someone's house, I broken through the second floor. The residents of the mansion seemed a little bit annoyed at this decision though, and no amount of reason that seemed to actually calm them down. I did, however, eventually convince them to move to another house. And they even left some parting gifts on their way out. I proceeded to think that I was now invincible to the world and thought it would be a genius idea to start a raid. I, however, was quickly brought back to reality and ran for my square body life. However, I was very determined at this point to prove a point, more so to myself than anyone else, that I actually knew how to play this block game. I prepared myself a wee bit better this time and then started another raid. Finally being successful with no totem pops, I let the villager out of his house so he could praise me for saving him from a disaster that I myself had brought to his front door. With the raid defeated, there remained only one boss, last event, to conquer to prove I not only knew how to play this game, but I'm actually not awful at it. The Warden. However, with this beast being the strongest mob in the game, at least according to Mojang and myself, I was not going to take this fight lightly. I set up a trap for him to fall in, and then for the first time ever, purposely triggered the Shrieker to summon the beast. As the newly crowned mob killer king, the greatest ever, definitely the best title I could have come up with, 
I began to gather some measly zombies to use in the iron farm. A farm I plan to make fairly large. Yet again, I got to interact with my favorite passive mobs in the game. Sometimes, you know, I just want to... <laughs> anyway, I quickly got to work building this thing up. A design that I came up with about a year ago in two-year-old hardcore world. That thing is still alive, by the way. I'm just playing on this one while we're on YouTube. I decided to use my newly constructed iron generator to build myself the first fully functioning beacon of this world. Before getting a strong craving for some bacon yet again. Can someone please make me some bacon? With my days slowly winding down to that amazing day 100, I didn't want to start any larger projects that would carry me past that day mark. As a result, I just made a simple sugarcane farm on day 95. From day 96 to 99, in all honesty, I spent just some time above my mob farm collecting both mob drops and sugarcane, stockpiling a crazy amount of rockets. There wasn't much to do at this point except for one more plan I had in mind for the final day. Emerging from my safe spot with one day to go in the world, I walked out the edge and accidentally ended it all. Can you imagine if I actually did do that though? I, I think I myself would have cried and probably never played the game again. In all reality, I gathered a couple supplies and flew to the end dimension where I took on the dragon for one more time before day 100, freeing the end again from its fiery purple breath. Can someone get this dragon some breakfast, please? Who am I even talking to? I'm by myself right now. As the final day of this journey was reached, the world is really only in its beginning stages. I have so many ideas for this world. I love to build. I have so many thoughts in my head that I can't wait to put in the block form for you guys to see. And you know what? This monument right here, honestly, I think it could use a slight Canadian touch. And I think I better go get my maple syrup.